We are going to look at building web forms in Drupal 8 and we're going to check out two modules that help you do this. First, we're going to look at the contact module, which is included in Drupal 8 core. And next, we're going to look at the web form module. So the contact module, you can find it by going to structure and then contact forms. Uh, it will provide uh, two contact forms by default, which is nice. You can just go ahead and edit the default form if you want. But let's take a look at the process of creating a new contact form. The label will be the title of this form, which we'll call new contact form. Recipients is where you enter the email address where the submissions will be sent to. Message will be the thank you message that the user gets to see after submitting the form. We'll just set this to thanks. Redirect path is where the is the page where the user is forwarded to after submitting the form. Now by default the contact form will send the user to the home page of your website, which I don't really like. I want to send the user just back to the contact form page, but I'm not sure what the URL is, so we're going to first save this form and then later get back to this setting and change it into something else. So that's saved. Let's take a look. Right, so we've got our form here. Drupal has already pre-filled the name and email address with my user account information, which is neat. And one thing I don't like about the contact module is that it adds this preview button here and there's no way to remove it through the interface, which is a bit annoying, especially if you would like to build like a lead gen form or any marketing form and you're really trying to optimize the conversion rate and then you don't need this additional button sitting right next to your call to action button. Anyways, what I don't like about the form right now is that upon submission it will take us to the home page. So let's change that. We want this to go to the URL of this contact page, which we'll copy from here. Okay, um, contact forms, new contact form, edit, redirect path. It's, it's Drupal 8, so we have to start the path with a forward slash. So we fixed that. Now let's take a look at managing the form fields. Because uh, the contact module is based on the field API module, uh, managing form fields is kind of the same as managing content types. So we can add the same fields that are familiar if you've ever created a content type in Drupal. Well, this is a powerful feature, but also one that you know creates some clutter because this list will include some things that we, we will never use in any web form. Uh, what shall we add? Just city will be fine. And this looks okay. Not much to configure here. We can make it a required field. And if we want to change the look of the form, we'll do this in the form display tab. There's not much we can change here. We can set a placeholder, which is cool. But we, while we can set a placeholder, we could make this, you know, city. There isn't an option to hide the label of the field in the form which kind of is annoying because this doesn't uh, let us design a very minimalistic form. So, you know, let's just put some city here. In the manage display tab, we have some additional options and we can hide the label here, but that doesn't change the look of our form. That only changes the look of the form submission that, that will be emailed to us. So let's just add another field. Let's add a select field. Red, blue, yellow. Uh, 
What is your favorite color? There we go. As you can see, it's very easy to create and edit forms with the contact module. It's not quite as powerful as the web form module, which is what we're going to look at next. Let's test if our redirect is now working properly. I like blue, that's okay. Yeah, this looks good. We get this error, but that's just because I'm editing this on a local host environment and it's not supposed to be sending out any emails. Now to use the web form module, you download it from drupal.org, install the module and also the web form UI module, and then you can go to structure and web forms. It also has a default form here, which is nice, but again, we're going to create a new web form. Let's call it new web form. Form, why not? It automatically redirects us to the build tab, which is where you add form elements. And as you can see, there is a huge list of elements that the web form is providing to us. It's a bit overwhelming at first, but once you're familiar with the, uh, some of the elements, you only you don't need all these elements. It's not really that much more difficult than the contact module. So let's try to create a similar simple form. Let's add a name field here. Again, there's a lot of options here, but we can just leave them as is and save the field. I would like to know someone's email if he's going to send my form. And a text area where the message will go. Save. And there's our web form. The web form redirects to its own thank you page, which I think is fine. And um, I'll now show you how to edit the thank you page. To do that, we go to the settings tab, then confirmation. And here we have a lot of options, uh, but I kind of like the separate thank you page. And we can change the page title into thanks. And the message, thank you kindly. And that's what we'll see when we submit the form now. Or it's probably the simplest solution is to just add a message to the current page. And since this is a simple form, I think the simplest solution will be the best solution. Let's check that out. Yeah, that's perfect. Now the foremost reason why I like the web form module is because it gives you more design control over your forms. For example, in our logistics theme demo, we made this little form here, which is powered by web form module. And instead of labels, it uses the placeholders, which is okay for such a tiny form. And we can uh, just place it anywhere in the page where we want. And down here, there's another form that is also powered by the web form module. And here you can see we use a two column layout to make the form a little bit more compact and to uh, organize it by country of departure, country of delivery. There's no problem at all just moving the form around in our drag and drop page builder. It just works like any other element. Except to edit the form, uh, we go to the web form module form administration page. We don't edit the form um, inside the drag and drop builder. 
And to just give you a quick look at how you build a layout like this, uh, let's go back to the web form administration page. So say I want to create a two column layout for this simple form. What I prefer to do, and I'm sure there's multiple ways to achieve this, is to use the flex layout container. Save that. And at the, in the beginning, it was not entirely obvious to me how this is used, but what we do is we add a regular container elements in the flex container. And each additional uh, container inside the flex container will change the layout. So now we add a second container and we'll have a two column layout. If I were to add a third container as a child element of the flexbox element, we'd have a three column layout. We put the elements inside the containers. And that was a very brief overview of the contact module and the web form module. If all you need is a simple contact page and you don't want to invest any time in customizing your form, I think the contact module is a great option. If you need anything more custom, then the web form module is just fantastic.